Thanks, Coach. Well, both teams were hoping the rain would vacate the Green Bay area by kick, but alas, it's still falling pretty steadily in and around Lambeau Field. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Green Bay Packers. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. First time here with Brown. And some room to run now. He's at the 40, 20, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A big play there. 78 yards as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll probably wish he'd reconsidered here. It will cost him 10 yards as he's down at the 15. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these teams, special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Newton to throw. Steps away to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And now following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Right, the Steelers right, now in the nickel here on third down. That's right, baby. They don't Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he'll take this across the 25 before going out of bounds. 14 yards, good for a Packer first down. First down carry by Bell. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Now, look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake, and they've taken care of that early. Second down, it's Bell. Looking to find a lane, but he can't. Reined in at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. It's third down and four.
They'll try and run for it with Bell. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It's a first down following a gain of three. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They fake the give. Newton looking deep for Adams. It's caught inside the 25. It's a big play that time for the Packers. 42 yards. Well, we spent a lot of time exalting the offensive masterminds in this game, right? They draw up these beautiful plays. They look so perfect up on the board. But occasionally, sometimes you say, throw it up and let him go get it. How about that play? On first down, it's Bell, and down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Packer first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. Counting down toward the midway point check, in corner one. Check tight, check tight, check tight. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. No lack of guts at all on that one. Normally in this situation in the red zone, that type of play isn't run, but I think they're trying to catch the defense off guard and also break tendency. No one really runs that type of a play. Guess what? We are. Let's see how you handle it. Second and six, Newton, and that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. And since the penalty occurred in the end zone, move the ball to the one-yard line. First and goal from the one-yard line. Costly penalty. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Now Newton. This will be caught by Brown. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Antonio Brown, his fourth touchdown on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Extra point was hooking, but he does make it through. And we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And to be frank, they're just in a tough spot. It's only November, already eliminated from playoff contention. I know their fan base doesn't want to hear that, but that's the case. What are they fighting for now going forward? You know exactly what they're fighting for is that word that some people don't want to hear, but it's pride. Draft. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go draft, but pride's better, right? You know something? <laughs> You're right, because that's part of it, but that's two different mindsets. That's front office mindset, yep. draft Man. position, where are we going to be and what do we need to get? And then the players and the coaching staff right now, pride. 
Can they win some games and feel better about themselves despite the fact they have no shot at the playoffs? Hey, box drop, box drop. On second and seven, lock. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. The Packers bringing in an extra member of the secondary here to try for the third down stop. They'll run on third down with Brown. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Not the result they were looking for there on third down. They end up taking a loss on the play. The only person happy now, the punter, gets to go out there and show mom that he gets to play in the game. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And we'll get our first update of the afternoon from the Meadowlands. And the Chiefs have jumped out to an early lead in their ball game. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. The Packer right offense ready to get their next drive underway. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. That catch, number 750 of his NFL career, and it puts him even with not just one, but two Hall of Famers, Michael Irvin and Charlie Joyner. So some pretty good company at 750. Yeah, you talk about the playmaker, Michael Irvin, and the guy who just made plays, Charlie Joyner. And that's what we're seeing here. Similar style in terms of being dependable, being open, and turning it into plays that you remember. Great, great. Set on second down now, it's Bell, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll... Third down. It's a loss of a yard. Brings up third down and two. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Single, single. 14 moving. 14 moving. And we have you on the edges. Have you on the edges. Out of the gun, Newton buying time to his left. He may try and run for this. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. And this third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. A shotgun snap for Newton. And they get to Newton and take him down for the sack. T.J. Watt, what a season he continues to have. His 15th sack of the campaign. On fourth down on is the punter, Colby Wadman. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. That's pulled in at the 32. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Packers. 
Chargers pick it up. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. These two teams all tied after one. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here we go. Check three, check three, check three. Gun, gun, gun. Back to throw, Newton. He's going to take a shot right away for the end zone. Got a man open, it's Adams. Touchdown, Green Bay. Devontae Adams with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Packers have taken the lead. Parkey with the extra point, and that makes the score 14-7. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. That 7 nothing lead of theirs short-lived as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they get this game tied up. Lock going to throw, escaping the pressure right. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Even though that one was incomplete, you could see the training that went into that play. He gets out of the pocket, ends up moving to his right. All he's trying to do, though, extend the life of the play, keep it alive, hoping someone would pop free. Was able to take a pretty good shot with a deep ball, but incomplete. On second down, it's Brown. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. lock on third down. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up fourth. So here, the men in charge are going to be looking at whether or not the receiver had possession of the ball as he went out of bounds. And they have to make sure that the receiver got both feet down in bounds as well. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Right there. 54. Right there. Right there. 54 Mike. I want that. Play action. It's Newton. They'll roll him out right. 
And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Stephon Tewitt able to shake free and get home for the sack. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Mike 50, Mike 50. Let's go, D. <laughs> Throwing on third down, Newton. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So step off go. the five yards. Go. Yeah, partner, you know, defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. They will come up on a first and five following the encroachment penalty. Here's Connor. It's a gain of three, and it sets him up with second and just two yards to go. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Complete. Juju Smith Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And it's third and short. Basically, you're not going to outwork two guys very often. Double coverage. I thought he was going to go somewhere else with the football. I get it. That's a stud wide receiver. You want to try to get him the football. Yeah, sometimes you rely on him a bit too much. You forget the other options that are out there. Down. After the incompletion, Seven, here now, third and two. They go with Brown. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. Let's go. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. He's crossing. He's checking crap. Throwing on first down is lock. Open man completes it to Smith Schuster. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. That's 
They'll run on first down. It's Brown, and he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Locked to throw on second down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. Weaving through traffic, and now he's free. And into the end zone. It's a pick six and a Packer touchdown. Make it back-to-back -back weeks now with a pick six for him. He had one a week ago. Talk about being in the groove, and what are the odds of what we're seeing right here? You don't see it happen very often. Listen, if you get a pick six in a season, it's been a big year, let alone back-to-back -back weeks. Tell you this, I wouldn't play cards against this guy in the <laughs> locker room. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he'd taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Ready, ready. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And this is not an easy situation. You're down early, in the elements, you're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On play action, lock. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And